is Jonathan and in this video I'll be going through the Arch installer script in Arch Linux. So this script allows you to install Arch Linux a lot easier without writing down like thousands of commands. The disadvantage I won't be able to learn how Linux works and will be quite limited on the customizations but we can obviously change it later on. But it allows new users to understand how Arch Linux works and how they'll be able to actually set up for a first time. So this is mostly focused towards new users. Um, but there will be a, a video coming soon, which will be for more technical users, where I'll be going through everything on how to install large links without using the install script. But this video will be um, showing you guys how to install large links with the Arch installer for new beginners. But in another video, I will show you guys how to do it the more advanced way. Okay. So firstly, what guys need to do is download for ISO. To download it, just click on this download link over there. Now scroll all the way down and find your country. So if I live in United Kingdom, go and select United Kingdom. There it is, and now you guys can select one of these links, and those links will allow you to install the ISO image. Okay. So as you guys can see, I have good known boxes opened. All I need you to do now is open up my photo machine that I have basically have created. So it should be Arch Linux 12. This was just for testing, but this is one for this video. And now I should start booting up. And now as you guys can see, I'm currently on the um, grub menu. All you do is um, select Arch Linux install medium. Select this one. Don't worry about these t um, texts that we see on the screen. It basically means that it's loading. I mean, everything seems to be fine because it's just saying OK. OK, so let's go ahead and start up the script. So to start up the script, all you need to do is type down arch install and now press on the enter key. And that should start loading up the install script for us to use to install Arch Linux. Okay, we're here now. So I'll be able to go to Arch Linux, uh, Arch install language. So once you press on the enter key, we should be able to change the language of this installer. You guys can change it to be Arabic, you guys can change it to being French, German, Hindu, um, Italian, Japanese. If you guys speak Japanese, but I was going to state English because um, I'm speaking English right now and this is the only language I technically can read. So go ahead and just select English um, by pressing on the enter key and we guys can use our keys to go down the list. So for example, here I can use the down hour to go down to mirrors. I can press on the up hour to go back to the art install language. So mirrors, let's go ahead and set a mirror. So set mirrors, go for mirrors region, search which country you're currently in. So I need to select GB or United Kingdom. Um, United Kingdom, here it is. Press on the space key, press on the enter key and that should allow to use the mirror that is in United Kingdom. Now select back, cool. So we set up mirrors, we set up locals. Um, which is actually the keyboard layout. So go to locals, let's go ahead and change the keyboard layout. Let's go ahead and change to being UK because I have a key, I have a UK keyboard layout. I'll go ahead and change this one to being, um, that's English US. I think English US is fine. Which local language to use, yeah. So we just wanted to change the keyboard layout, didn't we? Now go ahead and select back. Let me make sure it has been changed. Yes, it was able to be changed. That's amazing. So now we're using the keyboard layout that is um, UK. Now go ahead and select disk configuration. Let's go ahead and select for top one. You guys can also select a manual partitioning, but I'll be selecting for um, use a best effort default partitioning layout because this video is more for, for um, for new users but you guys can also um, do a manual partitioning as well but if you guys don't want to do that if you guys want to install it quickly just select the top one and now go ahead and select to drive so go ahead and select this one because this is going to be my drive press on the enter key 
Now select which file system or main partition should use. Let's go ahead and use ext4. Press on the enter key. Yes, let's just do that. Awesome. So now we got the um, disk configuration, which allows us to create our partition. We guys can also set up a disk encryption if we wanted to. Um, so that way, every time when you try to boot up to the drive, it will ask you for a password. So um, we guys can lock your operating system with a password for extra security. We guys can go to bootloader, and we guys can change it from main grub to limit if we wanted to. Um, but I would recommend to use grub um, because that one is the most popular one. And every and everybody are using grub, so just select grub. We swap it true, that is fine. Let me go ahead and ho to host name, and you guys should be able to change your host name, which is basically the computer name. So you can go ahead and call this one John Arch. Press on the enter key, and that allows us to change the host name, which is the computer's name. Now go to root password and set a password for root user. So let me go ahead and add 123 to it as an example. Press on the enter key once you finish writing down my password. Retype it, press on the enter key, and that shall allow it to add a new password to the root user. But obviously try to make it more of a complex password. So that way it's um, harder for people to hack into. Now go to user account. Now select add a user. Now you guys can give a user any names. Make sure there's no capital letters because it doesn't like it for some random reason. So I'll go ahead and call this one John. Enter our password. So I can just enter one, two, three as an example. Best enter key once done. Do the same thing. Should John be a super user? Basically, if um, if you want to add him as an admin user. If the guys do, just select yes. If the guys don't, for example, if he's a student at a school, then select no. But he is going to be for admin. So I'll go ahead and select yes, which is for default. Amazing. Now select confirm and exit and this will allow you to um, to save the user. Cool. So now we've got one user. Um, go ahead to profile and then from here we should be able to set up a desktop environment. So let me go ahead and select type. We guys can select desktop, we guys can set minimal or server or xorg. Let me go ahead and select the desktop. And from here, we'll be able to select which desktop environment to basically want to use. I want to use the Diplin, so I go ahead and press on the space key. And I'll press on the enter key to select this desktop environment. Now, we guys should be able to change your graphics driver by scrolling the way down um, with the arrow key. And then click onto the enter key. And then from here, we should be able to change it to any of these drivers that I want to use. If I've got NVIDIA drivers, right? Well, guys, should select NVIDIA proprietary because that would work a lot better when it comes to gaming. It would give a better performance. Um, or if you're running this a photo machine, make sure I select VMware um, photo box. But if we've got, if we're trying to run this on hardware and we've got NVIDIA graphics card, make sure we select NVIDIA proprietary. Otherwise, you may have some issues when it comes to gaming. So I'm going to go and select the VMware photo box because I'm running this inside our photo machine. So let's click on the enter key. Okay. So we're going to be able to change Greta, but I think that like DM, GTK, Greta is fine. Select pack. Kernels is fine. I wouldn't do anything in there. Additional packages. So what additional packages do you want to install? Okay. So we guys can type down Firefox. Let me go ahead and install Nano, and let's go ahead and install NeoFetch. Um, and press on the Enter key. Cool. So these are some additional packages that I want to install. We want to install Firefox and Nano and NeoFetch. Cool. Now go to Network Configuration. Um, let's go ahead and use Network Manager. Cool. Go to time zone and just select which time zone you're currently in. So if you're in England, just select your um, English time zone. Or if in America, just state um, your state. But some states have two time zones. I think Florida. I think Florida does have two time zones. So guys, just need to select your time zone really. Um, I think it should just, just be GB. Here it is. 
press on the enter key to select this as a time zone automatic um, time sync that's good we guys can set up op optional repertories as well if you press on the enter key we should be able to select which one we want so i'm going to select the multi-lib i will not worry about testing which is basically um using um rep programs um that is permanently in beta so if you guys want to test out like the newest 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 features for some software then you guys should select testing but for now it's going to select multi-lib because that's what i need now that's on the enter key so we've got some optional repositories and that looks all right isn't it we got a desktop environment set up um me using the graphics driver which is vm and we also set up a um a partition and we set up the mirrors and we have set up the language with the installer and we also um actually we need to set up audio so um to set up the audio what we need to do is go to audio this will allow us to select which audio so we want to use so let's go ahead and use the pulse audio because that one is very good okay so that what we forgot to do that's a good thing i'm going to go just checking on everything really making sure that everything has been set up and I think that's looking great. I'm going to skip on the disk encryption, but I would just assume that I would just ask you to enter a password and then just to confirm it. And that's how I'll be able to set up a password for it. The encryption key, really. Um, now what I need to do now is just select install. And I'll press on the enter key. And this is just basically um, a script that is um, telling the console what to do. So now all we need to do is press on the enter key to continue and that should start doing the um doing the commands. See right now it's currently formatting everything. Once it's formatted everything, then it should start installing the actual system as well as all of the um packages that you need to install. For example, that desktop environment, the audio driver, as well as the additional softwares that we have decided to install that includes Firefox, NeoFetch, and so on and so on and so on. And this may take a while to install. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video and I'll be back once it's done. Okay, so basically it's gonna ask a question. Would you like to ZH root into a newly um, created installation and perform some process installation configurations? Where you guys can select yes by default, which will allow you to add some new packages, to be able to um, do some configurations, to be able to upstate stuff and be able to add in new users, to change the auto driver. So basically um, do some changes to a system and to do um, some configuration, for example, changing um, some settings or um, adding a new user. But I'm gonna select no, but it'll start boot up to a terminal. So I'm just gonna select no. Okay, cool. So installation complete without any errors. Um, we may reboot. So let me go ahead and power off. Power off. That should just power off the system because I need to get rid of the ISO image and hopefully it does boot up. Let me go into privacies. Let me go to devices and sharing. Let me go ahead and remove it. Let me go ahead and reboot up to it again. Okay, we have the grub menu, which is pretty good to see. Now let me select Arch Linux. Okay, that's looking great. So now you guys can go ahead and add your password in. Now press on this key and that should allow it to log in. And now as you guys can see, we got the desktop environment up and running and we guys can just use the system. I'm right now using Budgie. But it's going to work the same as it would do with GNOME and all these other desktop environments. I just haven't ever used uh, Budgie, so I just desire to actually play around with it. Um, but if I go ahead and um, open up the terminal, which. Open a terminal. And I, I can go ahead and run the fetch. And now, as you guys can see, I was able to get Arch Linux installed. And it's running Deep Plane 23 version. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, please put a like and please subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.